So for today's work, um, and this is going to get us into thinking about sounds in poems, um, how we think about poetry in general, um, we're going to talk about making a poem from borrowed words. Uh, sometimes this is called found poetry. And language is poetic by its very nature. Um, in our oldest history, we have examples of societies that use poetry to teach their children about the proper ways to behave through epic poetry, through poems about the gods, about their heroes, etc. Um, poetry was used as a way to transmit information about society. And so um, these poems were handed down through the generations and then uh, ultimately in some cultures those things were written down. Well, our language which is in iambic pentameter, let's remember that too, um, lends itself towards poetic speech. And so what I'm going to give you today is a couple sentences, and I'm not telling you the source of them, by the way. Um, you are going to create a poem based on these couple sentences. That's the goal. So. Uh, how do we do that? Well, we're going to start with the source material, which you will see right down here. It begins with the words, I am totally musical. And you can read that how you want. Um, you're going to rearrange the words, the pieces of the sentences, the sentences themselves, in some way to create a poem. How you do that is up to you. I'm leaving this as open as I can, uh, with as few rules as possible. Um, because I want to allow for a multiple, a multiplicity. I would allow for a lot of different opportunities to interpret what these words are getting at. Put it that way. Um, how do you do this? Well, think about sound and pacing. Think about some of the things we've been talking about lately. You can remove words and punctuation that you don't think you need. If there's an and that you don't need, or a comma, or even a period, whatever. You can add words, but only a few. You can add words if you think you need to to make sense of something or to improve the grammar if you're worried about grammar. Um, but don't add words that change content. Don't add words that change meaning. If you feel like you want to, or you're concerned about that, come see me and, and ask. and. Um, I'll probably say go ahead, but I, I kind of want to see where you're headed, I guess. Um, there are no rules. There are no rules that you have to follow. You don't have to make this uh, rhythmic or not rhythmic. You don't have to make it rhyme or not rhyme. I think you'll see from the source it doesn't lend itself to that very well anyway. Um, this is free verse. You can arrange the poem on your page however you wish. Um, ultimately, you're going to uh, share this on a document that we will all have an opportunity to edit. You can add your name if you want to, but you absolutely must create a title for your poem. That's really important. Titles often tell us something about what the poet views as vital to the poem itself. The poem we looked at recently called The Heart was about a creature squatting on the ground, bent over, eating his own heart and enjoying it because it is bitter and because it is my heart. The poet called this poem the heart, not the creature, not bitterness. Called it the heart. Why is that? We can talk about that if we want, but not right now. So create this poem from borrowed words and I'll tell you soon where to post it. If you were not in class today, then make sure you go to Google Drive, Google Classroom rather, and uh, you'll find the instructions there. Okay, thanks.